Hello, so this is a short version of the video that I just did uh, that covers a lot more details so that you know people know what's been happening uh, but with this short video uh, basically I am trying to raise funds for uh, someone, a lady with her two children to get them safe harbour so to speak uh, to protect them from repercussions involving a murderer who was also pl uh, planning uh, two other murders then tried financially incentivizing me to help and you know with murder and disposing of uh, bodies and then that didn't work uh, and then via coercion which again didn't work uh, the person in question is my ex-spouse I've been separated for uh, probably five years or so and our two children, uh, one is five, one is nine, uh, both little girls, both, you know, happy, healthy girls, and they should remain happy and healthy. And uh, in a long video, I cover about uh, the murderer uh, without identifying them or giving uh, too specific information. The police so far have done nothing. Uh, there's also been uh, between a hundred and two hundred thousand dollars worth of property trashed and the police don't do anything uh, neither for willful damage nor for uh, you know stealing via unlawful conversion uh, ie someone treats property in a manner that is inconsistent with the ownership of the property ie smashing it up sticking it out in the rain uh, dumping it on a nature strip for things to further be taken, that kind of thing which has happened. The police again did nothing about uh, the unlawful uh, dumping and uh, now our car has been stolen uh, so my ex paid for half of the uh, car and I paid for half of the car approximately and that has now been stolen. I found out yesterday uh, the police uh, were going to, because uh, it was a different officer at Cleveland Police Station, was going to uh, put in a report and then a sergeant came out and said that that wasn't going to happen, that they're busy doing other things. Then I said, well, you know, the online reporting uh, will just say invariably this is too serious a matter, go to the police station. And then the sergeant was like, Oh, what do you mean your car's been stolen? And I'm like, well, it was there and now it's not there. And anyway, so uh, I have been victimised uh, since trying to stand up for my rights and your rights and everyone else's rights in relation to uh, appealing a uh, court uh, decision that was based on fraud uh, with a police prosecutor unlawfully and uh, committing perjury to falsely state even that uh, we had the re legally required mediation session for the, the magistrate's court even to have jurisdiction over the matter. And then the magistrate made unlawful uh, orders as well, uh, banning me from protesting, in which case under the Peaceful Assembly Act, uh, there were three options. One, to authorise the assembly uh, as is, uh, as was, it was supposed to be on the 31st of May and the next one uh, approving it but with modifications and the third one uh, not allowing an authorised protest, not preventing one uh, but not granting authorisation. The authorisation protects people and gives people confidence to go out there that they're not going to be harassed by the police uh, that kind of thing, uh, nor can they be charged with obstruction. Uh, just say, as I said in a long video, if you have you know 500 people walking past some shops and there's a customer trying to get in, technically that uh, can be obstruction. Uh, you know they've got to wait a minute or two minutes to get in a shop that uh, may turn some people off going to that shop uh, if they're very impatient. But you know there's protections with the authorized public assemblies and unfortunately I did listen to uh, the wrong set of free lawyers uh, that could 
uh, claimed that you could uh, appeal uh, the decision and have to add uh, you know, damages and whatever on there so it wouldn't be moot. And uh, I listened to the wrong lawyers, but because they are free and there was no retainer, etc., etc., then you know they can't even be held responsible for negligence. Anyway, so please uh, share this. Uh, watch the long uh, form of the video for more information. I'm trying to raise fifteen thousand dollars plus around two and a half percent GoFundMe uh, fees. That is for my ex and children to uh, get to safety, to pay back uh, debts that they've done to family and friends, including for uh, accommodation and food, uh, pay back after pay and uh, zip pay, etc., cetera, uh, which again was used for food and get passports and plane tickets and set themselves up in safety in Finland. Thank you. Bye. Please uh, share if you can't donate. It all helps. Thank you. And also, I forgot uh, in the short form uh, video to point out that uh, with the accommodation, it is required. It's the cheapest accommodation, uh, probably in a 100 uh, kilometer radius, maybe even 200 kilometer radius, that uh, is actually available. And if it's not for that, then the children will be taken off us for. Uh, neglect you can't uh, be living in a tent or anything like that or in a car uh, even uh, with children uh, you know for the protection of the children as well uh, but with the accommodation and storage that is taking uh, like 95 percent of my uh, fortnightly income uh, is being taken up every single week and obviously uh, I can't move out uh, with uh, my ex and children needing to then pay for 100% of the accommodation and it's a quandary and also uh, basically we need to do a lot of running around so she can even get ID to be able to flee the country. She's not aware of uh, me doing this uh, fundraiser, but the money will be paid directly into her bank account. Uh, besides, uh, you know, GoFundMe takes out their uh, fees or commissions, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they say we're a zero free, uh, sorry, zero fee uh, platform, but they do take out uh, the 2.2% plus 30%, or well, sorry, 2.2% plus 30 cents per donation. So that's why it's got the little extra buffer there. So thank you again and God bless.